we got to see Anthony Smith mid fight start making up delusional coping excuses when Johnny Walker started calling him out on his BS. How amazing was that? The fact that Anthony and Johnny had a full blown argument while Johnny was kicking his on paper legs to shreds was amazing. But on paper, he should have won that fight, guys. Johnny Walker proved me wrong, all right? Because I had said leading up to this fight that the last time we saw Johnny Walker in a kickboxing match with a guy in Tiago Santos where he's actually having these long striking exchanges, he didn't look great and he looked really tentative. But he looked awesome in this fight, all right? He was letting his hands go. And most importantly, he went to what I said leading up to this fight would have been Anthony Smith's demise, which was the leg kicks. Anthony cannot for the life of him defend leg kicks. And I think that if Johnny Walker wants to win this fight, because I'll just get into how I think he can win, I think he should go at the legs and commit to a lot of leg kicks early. Because if I'm looking at tape on Anthony Smith, he doesn't really check a lot of leg kicks. So that's what I think is Johnny Walker's path to victory. That's exactly how Magomed was able to take him out. That's how Alexander Rakic was able to take him out. Even John Jones absolutely brutalized the legs of Anthony Smith. Anthony started to try to adjust and check those kicks in the second round, but his legs were already screwed. And we saw Anthony Smith go from someone that was going through adversity, typical line hard performance, getting rocked, finding a takedown at the end of the first round. Maybe he can make something happen. Uh, and landing a big shot in the second round too almost rocking Johnny Walker to basically being a one-legged, pathetic excuse of a ranked fighter in the third, just basically taking a beating from Johnny Walker and Walker Mogdum. The craziest thing overall, I just need to bring this up. In the second round, when Johnny Walker started to feel himself, he, he could tell that he was getting the better of Smith and had the confidence to say, you know what, I'm gonna start talking some shit. Why you start talking shit to me? Why you start talking shit? He started having a full-blown argument with Anthony Smith, and all of a sudden, Anthony Smith yells out, You were coming at my family! You were coming at my family! You were talking shit! You were threatening my family! And I'm just sitting here like, what on earth are you talking? And you saw it. it took Johnny Walker by surprise. Because Johnny had this look on his face like, no, I what? What are you saying? Like, how delusional are you? You're literally making this up mid-fight. We got to see Anthony Smith mid-fight start making up delusional coping excuses when Johnny Walker started calling him out on his BS. How amazing was that? The fact that Anthony and Johnny had a full-blown argument while Johnny was kicking his on-paper legs to shreds was amazing, all right? Shout out to Johnny Walker for getting this win, for confronting the bully Anthony Smith, calling him out for his BS, calling him on his shit, all right? while he's kicking those on paper legs. So I got the pick wrong. It is what it is. Johnny had a better chin than I expected. Everyone in the lead up to this fight was like, he doesn't get knocked down unless it's a big puncher. And I was like, you can't say that because he's not getting hit by anyone at all. And when he has got hit, he's gotten dropped. Anthony is the first guy <laughs> to land clean shots on Johnny Walker and not knock him out, not knock him down. So uh, I honestly do think Anthony Smith should retire. Like. His hopes and dreams of winning a title are gone. And it just reminds me of the Nickelback song. Like, it's like the bottom of the rankings. I'm never gonna win. Yeah, I ain't gonna get a title shot ever again. And I really think that that's what he should have walked out to. Or that's what he should walk out to next time. Because it's kind of over. The winner of this fight was always gonna take on Alex Pereira. So we'll get to see Alex Pereira uh, just completely obliterate and annihilate. Johnny Walker in the next fight. Now, don't get me wrong. Walker looked improved. I'm going to I'm gonna really talk about that. He looks confident. And I think his whole uh, shtick with John Kavanaugh and the relationship they have, it seems like he has something going for him. And he looked so much improved since his last kickboxing-y fight with Thiago Santos, in which he just looked a little bit tentative. So, good win for Johnny Walker. Smith... I mean, sure, you might be able to beat up on a Devin Clark again, but other than that, I just don't see it happening, man. I feel like he should just hang it up. Uh, I guess we will have to wait a few weeks for Anthony Smith to get it together. Uh, you know that these losses are 
something that probably sucked for him. And uh, we'll see him on the Michael Bisbing podcast next month when he wants to come back. So, but let's get to the main event. Jelton Almeida just submitted Jarzinho Rosenstrike in the first round with a rear naked choke, proving that he is the most dominant grappler in the entire sport. But there's a reason as to why people don't hype him up and give him that kind of credit because he's submitting fat heavyweights that aren't that skilled. They're very one dimensional. And he proved yet again that outside of the top five in the heavyweight division, it is a skill graveyard. It's basically slim pickings. And for a massive, monstrous grappler that has been fighting in the light heavyweight division for his whole career, it's easy work. He is the most dominant grappler without a doubt. I believe that he's only taken like one significant strike throughout his whole UFC run so far. I mean, that's Hamzat Chamayevesk. But again, heavyweight sucks. People understand that, so they don't get as impressed. Jarzinho Rosenstrike just getting absolutely mogged, skill mogged by Jelton Almeida. And let's be honest, Almeida's on everything you could possibly imagine, but he still has some pretty good grappling skills. He has a lot of history of him fighting in the light heavyweight division and we know that those guys are usually a little bit better even though light heavyweight's nothing special it's good enough to make it to the top five of the heavyweight division as i said man he was going to run through him and that's exactly what he did from here on out he's got tough matchups i believe he called out Tai to ivasa which is just a really lame call out like i kind of poked at tom aspinall for calling out tabura but he has an excuse for calling out an easy opponent because he's coming off of a whole year layoff from being injured. Jelton Almeida's fresh. He's ready to go. He took no damage in this fight. He had one of his takedowns stuffed from Jarzinho, and that actually worried me early on because I was like, hold on, look at this. Maybe we'll be forced to see Jelton Almeida strike. He got backed up to the fence for the first time in his whole career. Then he landed the takedown. But to call out Tai to Ivasa after getting a first round submission, come on, bro. Like, you already proved that you belong in the top five from humiliating Jarzinho in under four minutes with a rear naked choke without taking a single fucking strike. You may as well call out the big boys. He should have called out Cyril Gone. I think that he would take out and beat Gone. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Gone would be the first guy to actually land a couple of strikes. But with the strength of a guy like Jelton Almeida and how easily Cyril Gone got taken down by John Jones, I would pick Almeida to beat Cyril Gaon to submit him in the first round or at least TKO him on the ground within the first two. And I think that's the matchup he should have called for because Gaon is a much bigger name. If anything, he'll get you closer to a title fight. Beating Tai Tuivasa at this point in time doesn't really get you any further. Uh, I think the tough matchups for Jelton Almeida are everyone but Gone and Tuivasa moving forward. I'm talking about Tom Aspinall. That's a guy that can wrestle. That's a guy that is really good with his grappling. He's had a, a black belt in jiu-jitsu since he was a teen, as far as I'm concerned. And he's a monstrous guy as well. Very well-rounded. Sergey Pavlovich proved that pretty good takedown defense against plotty man Curtis Blades. But then again, defending a few takedowns from plotty man Curtis Blades while plotty man is rocked is not the same thing from defending a takedown from a light heavyweight Jelton Almeida sauce to the gills, doing everything in his power to mow you down to the ground. So maybe he could take out a guy like Pavlovich and be the one to take him down. But those are his tough matchups. As far as I'm concerned, John Jones is basically retired. John Jones has come out and told us that he's not going to be fighting anyone but Stipe. So Jones and Stipe have their own division. Jones wants to fight guys that are coming out of the retirement home. And I guess that Jelton Almeida, if he beats Tai Tuivasa, he'll go on to fight Cyril Gaon or he'll go on to fight the winner of Gaon and Pavlovich or maybe Aspinall after Aspinall runs through Tabura. I would pick Aspinall to beat him. But other than that, how on earth are you going to go against Jelton Almeida other than a guy like Aspinall or Jones? Like, how are you going to confidently pick against this man? He just mows everyone down and hasn't taken a single strike. And I get it. The heavyweight division sucks, but... I feel like people need to start mentioning that he is probably one of the best grapplers in heavyweight divisions history. I get it. He hasn't had like a massive win yet, but still, man, do you really see many people t defying that? I mean, just take one look at him. He's a fucking mutant. All right. He's shredded to the bone, six foot three, maybe six foot four, and just goes in there, picks people up, throws them down and has his way with them. So good win for Jelton Almeida. Shitty call out, anticlimactic. I would have loved to see something else. 
let's talk about Anthony on paper Smith and his on paper legs. Anyway, on to the next one. Ian Gary, he landed a beautifully timed head kick on the skull of Daniel Rodriguez. And it looked like early on D-Rod was not going to just go away and be an easy fight. But of course, you land a head kick on someone, a flush head kick, you're probably going to TKO them. He set that up the exact same way Leon Edwards set up his kick with Kamaru Usman. Threw the right hand midway, started posturing to throw the kick, landed it beautifully, TKO D-Rod on the ground. And he had to ruin it by calling out Neil Magny, man. The fact that he called out Magny is really what annoyed me. Just because I understand there aren't many welterweights that don't have a fight. I think RDA and Vicente Luque are fighting. Sean Brady is going to be fighting Jack Della Maddalena. And Magny is one of the only guys outside of the top 10, below 15, that doesn't have a fight. But the reason I don't like it, and again, if it has to happen, it has to happen. I just can't get hyped for a Neil Magny fight. It's just always a one-sided name. It's never like a fight. Oh, I can't wait to see this fight. I'm just like, I can't wait to see Gilbert Burns. Or, you know, I can't wait to see Robbie Lawler back in the day before he lost to Magny. Uh, now it's going to be, I can't wait to see Ian Gary. But Neil Magny is probably one of the most boring, anticlimactic fighters you could ever have in the ranking spots. And Ian Gary's really excited. Uh, had a good moment this week. Talked a lot of shit. I'm glad that he was able to back it up. Here's the thing about Ian Gary. I like that he tries. And I think the reason why it doesn't come off that well to fans or people don't really like the way that he talks shit is because he always has a smile. He he does it while he's like happy, go lucky. And when Connor was talking shit back in the day, it was all this machismo and aggression. Ian Gary will say, I want to maul you in the same. He'll say the exact same thing that Connor would say back in the day, but he has the smile on his face in this like, you know, kid giddy energy. And it just isn't as like, as I said, machismo. But I do like how he was very confident this week, bulletproof confidence. I'm gonna maul this guy, I'm gonna make him look like he shouldn't be in there. I take it personally when guys sign on, especially with a smile on his face the whole time. Uh, I like Ian Gary. He is going to go far. Will he be a champion? It's still too early to tell. Daniel Rodriguez was on the decline, but hey, D-Rod was a step up in competition nonetheless from Song Kanan. And to finish him in the first round, beautiful. D-Rod hasn't gotten finished a lot in his career. And really good win. What did you guys think of the fights tonight? On paper, Smith, do you think he should come back? I was wrong about that fight. Johnny Walker looked great. His chin was better than I expected. And Jilton Almeida, most dominant grappler in MMA, just doesn't get the credit. And I think rightfully so, just because the heavyweight division is a skill cemetery. Until next time.